Hey and welcome. I'm your boy Solo. In this video, I'll be going over how to install Windows 11 from a bootable USB drive. From the Windows Media Creation Tool to the desktop, I'll be covering it step by step. If you already have Windows 11 installed, you can reset your PC by going to the Start menu and scrolling down in the in the system all the way down till you find Recovery. You can click on Recovery. You can click the fix problem without resetting your PC. This is the easiest option if you're just having some issues. Or you can reset this here PC by clicking reset this here PC. This will do a fresh install of Windows. But if you're moving from Windows 10 and need to do a clean installation of Windows 11, or if you just need to install Windows on your new PC for the first time, this guide will walk you through the process step by step. And before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. To get started, we are going to need a USB drive that is 8 gigs is recommended and make sure that it's formatted with a FAT32. You can do this here by going into your file explorer, going to this PC, finding your USB drive, right clicking it and clicking on format. When this loads up, all you need to do is go down to the filing system, make sure it's a FAT32, name it whatever you would like and click start. That's as easy as it is, but do keep in mind that this is going to erase everything on the USB flash drive. So make sure that it, is, it has nothing on it or nothing important. Save it somewhere else first and, because this is going to wipe everything on it. Okay, close that window. Close that one. Next, we're going to need to get the media creation tool from Microsoft. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Or you can just go over here to Chrome, open Chrome, and you can Google Windows 11 creation tool. The first option here should be uh, www.microsoft.com and it should say download Windows 11 Microsoft. This is going to bring you to the Microsoft page and we're just going to scroll down. Okay, when you scroll down it is going to give you a few options. It's going to say Windows 11 Installation Assistant. This is going to be the best option for installing Windows 11 on the device you're currently using. But I actually, I'm going to go down here to create a Windows 11 installation media. This here fixes a lot more problems. Like if you're crossing over from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and just did the update and you may have some issues that came from Windows 10. And this is one of the only ways to fix it. So that's why I'm going over this way specifically. So we're going to create Windows 11 install media. You can click the before you begin. It'll just let you know what you're going to need for this here process. But we're just going to click the download now. This is a very small download, it's only going to take a moment. First thing it's downloaded, we're just going to click it from here, give it a launch. It's going to say, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? We got to click yes. It's going to load up and say it's getting a few things ready. At this here point, we can close the Microsoft website. We're not going to need it anymore. Okay, Windows 11 setup, it's going to ask you a few things. It's going to make you look through the terms and license. Just click accept. Next, it's going to ask you a few things. It's going to say select your language and edition. Now you can pick the ones that you know is recommended. If you're reinstalling it on the PC you're on, it, you can select the option that says use the recommended option for this PC. But with this here on checked, you'll be able to pick a few things. You'll be able to change your language. It doesn't allow you to change your edition of Windows uh, to anything else. But I'm just going to click the use the recommended options for this PC because I'm going to reinstall it to this here PC. So keep that in mind if you need to change the language. Make sure that checkbox isn't checked or it'll be grayed out and you won't be able to click on it and then just click next. From here, it's going to let you choose which media to use. We're definitely going to go with a USB flash drive, but there is an ISO here. This here will allow you to burn it to a DVD if that is an option that you wanted. I haven't used a DVD in a long time, but the option is there. So make sure the USB drive, the flash drive is selected and click next. It does let you know that you need at least an 8 gigabyte. The next window is going to say select a USB flash drive. It's going to have, it should only be the only one that's plugged in. If you have other ones plugged in, I suggest unplugging them just so that you don't pick the wrong one. If you formatted it and named something that you would be familiar with, just make sure that that one there's the one you have selected and click next. Okay, the first step that it's going to go through, the first process is going to be downloading Windows 11. It does say feel free to keep using your PC while this is going on, but depending on your internet speed, it's a 4 gig or bigger download. This may take a bit of time, so I suggest grabbing a drink, stretching your legs, uh, doing something for a few minutes. This is going to take a, a this is going to take a bit. I'm just going to fast forward this and I'll just be back in a minute. When it's done, it's going to say your USB drive is ready, and all we need to do from here is click finish. It's going to take a few minutes to close. After that, we're just going to need our to restart our computer and spam the delete. So, we're going to get we're going to do that now. We're just going to go here click the restart and we're going to spam delete as it starts up. 
Once it loads up into the BIOS, it's going to look like this. Depending on what BIOS you have, you can click on the advanced and do it differently. But if you have one like this here, it's just going to be a boot priority. It's going to be different places on different boards. And all you have to do is find the USB drive with something in it. It's going to be red if it has something in it. So if you left it plugged in, you'll just be able to find it. It'll say UEFI USB Kingston data. We're just going to drag this one here all to the front. By doing this here, it will allow it to load up to this one here first before checking the boot drive. So it will load up to the USB drive before it will try to boot from your Windows. Okay, and like I said, it will be different for different manufacturers. ASUS will look quite a bit different, but it will still be in the boot priority, so there should be a menu for that. It will mostly be a drag and drop option in, the, in most of the newer BIOSes. So from here, we're just going to save and exit. It'll ask you to save the configuration and exit, click yes. It's just going to go through a boot cycle and this time it's going to load up to the USB drive. Just remember when you're done installing Windows to go back into your BIOS and change it to your hard drive first because if you leave something like a USB drive in there that might be bootable, it will boot from that first. So if you have like per some peripherals plugged in and stuff like that and it restarts and you do have an issue, just remember that you can turn that off as well. You only need it on for this year one process and sometimes leaving it on doesn't help very much. So we'll definitely go back in and turn that off after we're done installing Windows. Once the startup loads up, the first page that it's going to show you is going to have a language to install, time and currency, keyboard and format. Pick the ones that apply to you. For me, this is English United States, time and currency is English Canadian, English Canadian, and the keyboard layout is US for us. After that, we're just going to click the next button. And from here it's going to say set up and it's going to give us the install now or the repair your computer. Like I said before, if you're just having issues, you can repair from this here as well if you need to. But we're going to click the install now. The next page is going to say activate Windows. If you don't have a product key, that's fine. If you're reinstalling this here on a PC you've already had Windows paid for on and it's linked to your email address, this will be fine. You can click I don't have a product key. If you do have a product key, it's a good time to type it in now. For me, I'm just going to click I don't have a product key because when you log in to Microsoft with your live account or your Microsoft account, it will know that you've owned this computer. If it's a fresh installation of Windows and you haven't purchased it yet, you can add this here and activate it later on. So we're still going to skip this here step by clicking on I don't have a product key. This is going to bring up a page that's going to let us pick what operating system. For most people, this is going to be Windows 11 Home Edition. But if you have another edition, and if you know you have another edition, you can pick one of the other ones. If you don't know, definitely leave it at Windows 11 Home Edition. If you don't have this one here paid for, it's always going to ask you to pay for these ones here. So we're just going to pick the Home Edition and click Next. It's going to ask you to accept the license terms and agreements. If you, if you want to read down through that, definitely take your time and read down through it. I'm just going to click the Accept and click Next. The next option is going to ask you what type of installation do you want. You can upgrade, install Windows, keeping files, settings, and applications. I don't suggest this. This is the problem with upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, as some of the settings and things that it keeps breaks your installation. That's the reason why I'm making this here video, is so that we can do a fresh installation to fix that issue. So if you're upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, make sure that you do a fresh installation of Windows 11, or you might run into some different issues. Your mileage may vary though. So we're going to click on the custom installation, install Windows only, advanced. And if you have a bunch of different drives on your system, it's going to show all the different drives. For me, this here doesn't matter because all of the drives are empty and I can, af I can delete them all, so it doesn't really matter. The drive that we want to pay attention to is drive 0. This is our main system drive. You can tell here where it says all the information, where it says MSR, reserved, recovery, primary. So all of those ones here, we're going to delete them. We're just going to click delete. Okay, and we made sure we deleted all the extra stuff so that we had all on the allocated space. I suggest not doing this if I was you. Um, if you have other drives connected to your system, doing that will absolutely erase everything on them. So make sure that you only do the drive that you're going to be doing your Windows installation on. I'm doing this installation to do a clean of my NAS system and redoing it from scratch because it had some things, some viruses and whatnot, and I upgraded from Windows 10 and found a lot of issues. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to clear everything, but just make sure that if you have some drives and you have stuff, that you don't want to lose. Make sure that you start over, restart your computer, shut it down, unplug the drives that you're that you're worried about. That will prevent you from having any data loss. Keeping that in mind, we're just going to click on the drive zero on a allocated space and we're going to click next. 
It's going to go through the installing of Windows, the status is going to copy the files. This year process may take a little bit of time, but your mileage may vary. I suggest watching this when it gets close to the installing the updates part. When it's done finishing and restarts, you will need to unplug the USB drive or it will loop through the installation process again and we're not going to want that. We'll want to unplug the USB stick. First thing it says, installing updates. Okay, let's unplug the USB drive now just so that we don't boot loop back into the installer. We don't want to install it over and over and over again. So make sure that you unplug the USB drive now. It'll just take a few seconds to restart and it'll boot back into the installer. The first time it boots up, it may take a few minutes and it's going to say getting ready and load up a few things. You'll see some loading bars percentages go by. Don't worry, this is perfectly normal for the first time installing Windows. If you think it's taken a little bit longer than it should, just remember that this process sometimes takes a while depending on your hardware. If your drive is a little bit slower or it runs into a little bit of a problem, it may take longer than expected. So I suggest doing something in this year time while it's installing. You won't miss much, it'll just load up to the page and start asking you questions. So you can definitely take your time, make yourself a coffee, grab a drink, stretch your legs. This will take a minute. It restarted, that's perfectly normal. It might restart a few times during this process. Okay, the Windows logo popped up there for a second. The first thing it's going to ask us is our region. We're going to pick Canada because that's where we're located, but definitely pick the one that applies to you and click yes. The next selection here is your keyboard layout. I'm going to pick US, but the same goes for this here as well. Pick the one that applies for you and click next. Do you want to add a secondary keyboard? At this here time, we don't want to add a secondary keyboard. And you can always come back and do this here later if you skip it. So we're just going to skip it for now. And now Windows is going to check for updates again. Depending on your internet speed, your mileage may vary. This could take a quite a while or it may only take a few minutes. And it restarted for the second time. And it's going to load up. This should, have been, this should be the last time that it needs to restart. Alright, once it loads up, it's going to say, let's name your device. So whatever this one here is going to be, give it a name. You can also skip this here process, but I definitely suggest just naming your computer and clicking next. It'll make it easier to find on the network. But if you're not doing any of that, you can just click skip for now. We're going to click next. After we name it, I lied, I guess it's going to do one another restart there. This time when it loads up, it's going to say, let's add your Microsoft account. This is where Windows 11 is different from Windows 10. You used to be able to skip this here and make a local account. There is no way to do that in Windows 11. You will need to use an email address. Like I said before at the first of the video, make sure that you link your Windows 11 or Windows 10 product key to your email address or your Microsoft account so that when you log in, it'll know that you already have Windows paid for. For this here step, we're gonna have to put in our email address. There's no skip option. So just give me a minute and I'm gonna type my info in here now. After it's typed in, just click next and type in your password. After it logs in successfully, it's going to get you to create a PIN number. I definitely suggest doing this on any computer. This will make logging in a lot easier than using your full password. So we're going to create a PIN now to make this here step easy. Click OK to continue. OK, it's going to say, welcome back, Justin. Your settings for OneDrive and whatnot, all your PC. It's going to ask you to restore from your old one. Now, if this here says the computer that you had last, definitely feel free to click this. But for me, the last installation on this here computer was a ZN NAS system, not a test bench. So if you've installed Windows more than one time, it's going to come up with some options that you may not want. But if this is like your preference and you know this is the one that's set up with all your settings the way you like them, you can click it and restore it. They do keep a cloud backup of your settings so that you can just click and restore it and get kind of back to where you were. But for me, set up as a new device. This will not matter. Your live account will still, if you have Windows paid for, your live account or your Microsoft account is still going to be linked to it. And this will just set it up as a new device without changing all of the settings to the ones you used to have. Some of those might be a problem. So I'm going to set it as a new device so that I don't have any of my settings issues or anything like that from my old Windows 10 installation and do a fresh installation. So we're going to click next after we have the setup as a new device. This is just to ensure we don't have any of the settings that we were having issues with. Okay, Windows 11 is going to ask you the same old junk Windows 10 did. It's going to say, let Microsoft app use your location. We're going to pretty much just go through this here list as fast as we can. We're going to click no, accept, find your device, no, click accept. These here choices may vary, but I don't want Microsoft to have any of my information. So I'm going to click no to everything. Send diagnostic data to Microsoft, required only, accept, click no, accept, click no, accept, no, accept, 
This is going to stop you from getting a lot of bloatware and extra games and stuff like that as well. That's something that I found. Going through and clicking, knowing all those things, stops it from putting like 20, 11 million games on your computers. Keep that in mind. This year we'll keep the bloatware down as well. Next, it's going to ask you, let's customize your experience. And you can go down here and pick the things that apply to you. For me, I'm just going to skip this because I don't want any of this here stuff. So we're just going to click skip. You'll always be able to come back and change these things later on if you want to in the settings. You can take your time and look through them and change the ones that you want, or you can do it later if you want to. Your Microsoft account and OneDrive. It's going to ask you to use this here device with peace of mind. No, we do not want this. We have to click next here though. It doesn't allow us to skip this part. From here, it's going to say play over 100 games and going to ask you to join Game Pass. For this, we're just going to click skip now. We definitely don't want to pay. Even join for $1. They're definitely going to charge you at the end of the month and bang you. So we're going to skip this for now. We don't want Game Pass. It's going to greet us with our high. And it's going to take a few more minutes to get ready and start up. I definitely don't recommend turning off the PC during this process as it may make your windows have a few issues. <laughs> so please keep that in mind. Don't turn off your power or anything like that. Don't shut your PC off. Make sure it's not in a situation where it might power off. Reinstalling windows over again would be inconvenient. Okay, and once it loads up, it's going to load up here. It's going to load up with the start menu open. That will be it. Your Windows 11 will be fully installed. I definitely suggest going into the settings, going through all of the updates, and making sure everything's good to go. There's going to be a few updates that you're going to do. Same as in Microsoft Store. You're going to have to go in there and make sure that you check for the updates in there as well. But that's all there is to it. After that, you should be set with a clean installation of Windows 11. So I definitely hope this here fixed your issues. I will be covering in a future video on how to make Windows 11 look a little bit more like Windows 10. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay tuned and get subscribed to catch that content. And if you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching.